So this is Henry, the writer, speaking. Henry ignored personal queries, except if the writer was quite young, but he willingly discussed his novel, because Henry has written a novel that features animals. The questions or comments were often the same. Soon he could reel off standard answers with easy variations to fit the tone or angle of a particular letter. Henry's novel featured wild animals, and many letters came down to questions about them, about real animals and figurative animals. Readers assumed he had training in zoology, or at the very least a lifelong passion for the natural world. Henry replied that he had the same broad affection for nature that any sensitive inhabitant of this planet has, but no outstanding interest in animals, no abiding love for them that might be called a character trait. The use of animals in his novel, he explained, was for reasons of craft rather than of sentiment. Speaking before his tribe, naked, he was only human, and therefore, possibly, likely, surely, a liar. <laughs> I suddenly noticed that. I suddenly noticed the presence of religion. And for the first time in my life, instead of being glib and cynical about it, instead of just pointing out the caste system, for example, I sort of said, well, what is religion about? What are all these people who believe? For the first time, I became interested in the phenomenon of faith. Because being a reasonable person, nothing is more insulting to reason than faith, um, especially religious faith. But I suddenly asked myself, well, you know, what does it mean to have faith? What is it about? And so I suddenly thought, well, why don't I tell a story of a religious character, someone who has faith? Wouldn't that be interesting? It suddenly seemed really interesting, whereas before it never had. It suddenly struck me as being very interesting. Even because we have more than one faith. Yeah, because I wasn't interested in looking at necessarily organized religion. You know, in Canada, nothing is more of a turn-off than someone who says, Jesus says, that instantly turns off Canadians. Instantly. And then if you have someone say, Om the Halla, then everyone's terrified. And if you have someone who's just mumbling in Hinduism, it's, you know, it's folkloric. It's all about elephants and monkeys. So I didn't want to, to talk about organized religion. I was more interested in talking about what is shared by all religions, which is faith. This belief in something that you can't prove. This belief in something that's beyond reason. So I became interested in that. And as a result, initially it was just, I was looking at it from the outside. More sympathetically, but still from the outside. I was looking at religious people the way Jane Goodall might look at chimpanzees. But just as Jane Goodall fell in love with her chimpanzees, I fell in love with my strange religious people. And I, I, I in a sense, I became one of them. So yes, I am religious now. Not in, a, in any way in a denominational, denominational way. It's more a willful act of faith. I do choose to believe that all this makes sense. That it's not just chemistry and happenstance but that somehow, in a way that I don't understand because I'm too small, too, too stupid, that all of this somehow makes sense, that this is one small corner of the canvas, and if you looked at the whole canvas, it would paint a picture in which everything makes sense, including violence, including evil, including the dying of children. So I am religious in that sense. Not written by the tax terms, but at the very end of the book, there's a section called Games for Gustav, the terrible, terrible section, which is my attempt at allegory. Uh, throughout this is an attempt at allegorizing the Holocaust. In other words, not looking at it literally. Not reciting the same facts, the same years, 33 to 45. Not the same cast of characters, Hitler, Goering, Goering, Himmler, etc. Not the same places, Auschwitz, Berlin, Gals, and Buchenwald. Uh, those are nearly overknown. They're so well known that we sort of... We, we feel we've been there, done that, we've got it, and I'm not sure we necessarily apply it. Just a few days ago, I was in Holland, and then... I was just commenting on the election of, not the election, well, the, the, the election, sorry, but the great number of votes that Rich Wilders got. So I really didn't have votes. And here's a man who thinks that mosques should be, they, they should be forbidden, and the Quran should be banned. And that thinking is, 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 is identical to the thinking of Nazis at the time, who thought, you know, synagogues should not be built, and Torah should be destroyed. There is no difference. I'm not saying Rich Wilders is, actively saying that violence should be done to, is to Muslims. But that's not far down the road. He may just think that we should ban the Quran and not allow mosques to be built. But some people who are maybe less intelligent than him will then go from there and actually attack, attack Muslims. It's the same kind of thinking that leads to things holocaustal. Um, so at the very end of the section, there is my attempt at allegory, which is to get away from all the heaviness of history, all the million facts, and just get to its essence. 
So games of Gustav are, 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 are 12 moral situations that end in a question. Very short. Can you give one more? No, I'd rather not. I'd rather, because it's, but you know, please don't just rush to the end of the book to read what they are. It'll work better if you actually work your way. It's not a very long book. If you work your way to it, and try to read them mindfully. You might try to read them mindfully. Try to really put yourself in that. And I think if you do, you'll place yourself in a Holocaustal place. You'll place yourself as a Jew might have felt between, you know, in 42, somewhere in Poland.